Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Kathy Hawken, and I am a member of the Good Shepherd Daily Office Team, the ministry that brings you morning and evening prayer. This service is Zoomed live every weekday morning at 9 a.m. exclusively on Zoom. To participate in the live service, go to goodsheponline.org, select the worship drop-down list, and click on prayer. Scroll down and you'll find the service leaflet for today's service. Just look for today's date immediately above the service leaflet. There is an image of prayer books in the pews. Click on the link to join via Zoom. The service will be available beginning at 10 a.m. on all of the Good Shepherd Communications channels, Facebook, YouTube, and the prayer page on goodsheponline.org. Welcome. It is Tuesday, December 28, 2021. Our year is almost gone. It is the Feast of St. John Transferred. And we would need Ian to explain to us why it's transferred. But I did find, and I found a fun little site. It's called Episcopop, who is an Episcopalian who writes about things in the Episcopal Church. And it is the fourth day of Christmas. Uh, it is, however, interesting because if Christmas falls on December 26th, then all of the feasts are moved forward. So St. Stephen's moves forward one day and uh, St. John to the 28th. And tomorrow, I'll give you a little hint, uh, is the Holy Innocents. Uh, St. John the Evangelist is, not, is one of the 12 disciples. We know about him. He's usually identified as the one who Jesus loved. Of course, he's the one who wrote that. So that's always interesting too. He also wrote a couple other letters um, and there are a lot of Johns, so they're not totally sure which John wrote which, but it can be difficult to sort out. Uh, this gentleman uh, took a course in Greek and he said they, they wrote today's gospel or today's le second reading in Greek, but it was very rudimentary. So they didn't think John was Greek because it was pretty, that wasn't his first landing. But what they did say, for the love of God is that we obey his commandments. That seems on, doesn't it? Since when does love depend on obeying commandments? Yet he thinks our inclination is to put the cart before the horse. I believe the intent is to show that when we obey God's commandments, it is a sign that we have loved God all along, that this is a natural response to that love. If we love God, what else would we want to do? And what does John mean by his commandments? Whether or not he is the same person as the author of the gospel of John, he most certainly means love one another. Jesus came into the world and proclaimed that there is in essence only one commandment, love. If we place love at the center of our lives every day, we have conquered the world. We have got it all figured out. That doesn't make life easy, but in a very real, real way, love is the key to every door. I thought that was really uh, nice. And uh, it kind of goes along with uh, our underlying be kind that, the, uh, that Ian uh, started us all with when we began our ministry on uh, of morning prayer. So let us begin. Behold, the dwelling of God is with mankind. He will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself will be with them and be their God. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever and ever, amen. Alleluia, to us a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. We will now say together the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are all the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. 
and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Alleluia. To us, a child is born. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Our psalm today is Psalm 92, which we will say together. It is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to tell of your loving kindness early in the morning and of your faithfulness in the night season, on the psaltery and on the lyre and to the melody of the harp. For you have made me glad by your acts, O Lord, and I shout for joy because of the works of your hands. Lord, how great are your works and your thoughts are very deep. The dullard does not know nor does the fool understand that though the wicked grow like weeds and all the workers of inequity flourish, the flourish only to be destroyed forever. But you, O Lord, are exalted forevermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, you, lo, your enemies shall perish and all of the workers of inequity shall be scattered. But by my horn, you should have exalted like the horns of wild bulls. I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes also gloat over my enemies and my ears rejoice to hear the doom of the wicked who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in an old age. They shall be green and succulent that they may show how upright the Lord is, my rock in whom there is no fault. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson this morning is from Exodus, chapter 33, verses 12 through 23. Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, bring up this people, but you have not let me know who you will send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name and you have found favor in my sight. Now, if I have found favor in your sight, show me your ways so that I may know you and find favor in your sight. Consider too that this nation is your people. He said, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. And he said to him, if your presence will not go, do not carry us up from here. For how shall it be known that I have found favor in your sight? I and your people, unless you go with us. In this way, we shall be distinct. I and your people from every people on the face of the earth. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing that you have asked, for you have found favor in my sight, and I know you by name. Moses said, show me your glory, I pray. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before you and will proclaim before you the name, the Lord. And I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. But he said, you cannot see my face for no one shall see me and live. And the Lord continued, see, there is a place by me where you shall stand on the rock. And while my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft of the rock and I will cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will take away my hand and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the people. See that they remember his name, that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things and is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy. For the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, 
is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson is from John, chapter 21, verses 9 through 24. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went abroad and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was how the third time that now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. He was the one who had reclined next to Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is it that is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about him? Jesus said to him, if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? Follow me. So the rumor spread in the community that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if it is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who is testifying to these things and has written them, and we know that his testimony is true. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now let us say together the song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered the promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to his Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our colleagues for today begin with a colleague for the Feast of St. John, Apostle and Evangelist. Shed upon your church, O Lord, the brightness of your light, that we being illumined by the teachings of your Apostle and Evangelist John, may so walk in the light of your truth, that at length we may attain, attain to the full, fullness of eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A colleague for grace. O, o Lord God Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for guidance. Direct us, O Lord, in our doings with your most gracious favor and further, further us with your continual help that in all our works, begun, continued, and ended in you. We may glorify your holy name and finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ in all denominations, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Indianapolis the Right Reverend Jennifer Baskerville Burroughs Bishop. We also pray for our Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Eaton, Peter Eaton, and our Companion Diocese, remembering today, especially the Diocese of the Dominican Republic, the Right Reverend Moses Quazeda Mota Bishop. A prayer for mission. Oh God, you made of one blood all the people of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that your people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them, remembering today especially Joe and Connie, Ruth, Scotty, Joseph, Dave, Lynn, Rachel, George, Nolan, Joan and family, Susan, Mary, Drew, Joe, John, Cassandra, Charlie, Anne, Bob and Kim, Teresa and family, Jake, Janie, Dennis, and Janet and Barbara. We also pray today for our Connect Ministries, remembering especially owls, that good shepherd, older, wiser, livelier shepherds may enjoy fellowship while working together to provide support to the church and the community. And Artie's Party, that members of our church and the community may enjoy a glamorous evening together while supporting Good Shepherd's Outreach Ministries. Now let us say together the Good Shepherd Parish Prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. 
Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we invite your prayers, petitions, and intercessions of thanksgiving, either shared with all or in the silence of your heart. Ian uh, asks that we pray for the repose of uh, the soul of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who served so faithfully uh, during his lifetime, especially in opposition to apartheid and racism. Uh, and I do have a prayer for the faithfully departed. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your son, Christ our Lord. Grant to your whole church in paradise and on earth, your light and your peace. He truly was uh, a man of God and made such a difference. Letty asks that we praise for deliverance from COVID-19, remembering especially our neighbors, Krista, Ed, and Betty Ann. Oh, Letty and everyone, don't we all pray to be delivered from COVID? Um, we ask the Lord to help us solve this problem, to all work together to encourage people who are hesitant to get vaccinated so that this horrendous disease may leave our presence and go wherever bad diseases go. We ask this, dear Lord, in your name. Amen. It is, um, it's a tough one. That is for sure. Anyway, we'll keep praying and hopefully that prayer will be answered. Now I need to get back over here. So now let us say together a litany of thanksgiving. And despite COVID, we truly do have so much to be thankful for. Let us give thanks to God, our Father, for all his gifts so freely bestowed upon us. For the beauty and wonder of your creation in earth and sky and sea, we thank you, Lord. For all that is gracious in the lives of men and women, revealing the image of Christ, we thank you, Lord. For our daily food and drink, our homes and families and our friends, we thank you, Lord. For minds to think and hearts to love and hands to serve, we thank you, Lord. For health and strength to work and leisure to rest and play, we thank you, Lord. For the brave and courageous who are patient in suffering and faithful in adversity, we thank you, Lord. For all valiant seekers after truth, liberty, and justice, we thank you, Lord. For the communion of saints in all times and places, we thank you, Lord. Above all, we give you thanks for the great mercies and promises given to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. To him be praise and glory with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And to all of you, I wish a happy, happy new year with uh, a great 2022 and perhaps a healthier 2022. Um, anyway, in keeping with uh, the love concept, as you go forth today, remember to always be kind. Have an absolutely fabulous day. And someone will be here tomorrow at nine o'clock. So we may share our prayer and thanksgiving at that time once again. It's a great way to start the day. <music>